This is One on One. Laura Walker is the President and Chief Executive Officer of New York Public Radio. Good to have you on again. It's great to be here. Last time you were here, a couple years ago, good things were happening, even better things are happening now. Describe for folks who do not know what New York Public Radio is, exactly what it is. Well, we are now seven radio stations, uh, WNYC AM, FM, WQXR, which is classical music, and then four great stations in New Jersey. New Jersey. Yeah, the New Jersey piece was not in place at the time. That's right. A lot is happening on that side of the river. Um, when we met then, there was not the New Jersey public television station that is today, NJTV, which is right. operated by WNET, our partner, and, and this whole thing. Um, the world of public broadcasting, dramatically changing, the digital piece, part of it. You enjoying that? Oh, tremendously. It's really, really exciting. You know, radio is an old medium, you know, 1920s, but yet we are making this incredible transition into the digital age. And what people want is really great content. They want content that, you know, stands out, that touches their hearts, that, you know, helps them learn things. And I think uh, the intimacy of the audio medium um, is really, uh, really superb in the d digital era, where people can get the content when they want it, how they want it, and listen to it, you know, whether they're underground in a subway, driving in a car, or just at home in their kitchens. And, you know, more and more people are finding audio and, you know, downloading it on podcasts. We have huge growth in podcasts. And, and there's also mm. a kind of a new talent base that's coming up. What does that mean? You know, so there's people that are, you know, in their bedrooms, uh, just, uh, you know, experimenting with podcasts. Talking about talented folks. Alec there Baldwin. is Alec Baldwin, <laughs> and here's the thing. and he's That's uh, one of his shows on your operation. Yes, he's, uh, that's our show, and we have started that as a podcast. And, uh, Did you know, really? It started as a podcast, and it just has, he is such a tremendous interviewer. I mean, he is, he, whether he's talking to Brian Williams or uh, Lauren Michaels or, you know. Uh, and, or Kristen Wiig, I was just told. Kristen Wiig, yeah, that was a great interview. I mean, they're, they're terrific. And he, and, and these are 20 minute or so segments uh, and people are downloading them. Millions of people are downloading them and listening, you know. So, so hold on, because see, I call it a show. And so what's interesting is yeah. it's not necessarily a show that you have to catch at a certain time. Exactly. You download the podcast. Right. You, you, you like what Alec Baldwin does on the station, just for example, right. and you want to find that particular interview. It's not the same yeah. as what... That's right. And it's not, it's not, uh, it's destination programming because people go to it. Right. But it's not a destination time. And then you can subscribe to it. So then, you know, you can get Brian Williams this week or, you know, uh, whoever is going to be coming up next time. You, you know, can find right? what you want. And It'll, by the way, more and more, on the, sorry for interrupting, on the television side, and, and Neil Shapiro has driven this on our end, the president, as you know, and the CEO of uh, WNET. Yeah. He's Very encouraged good. all of us who produce content. You produce it here, that's fine. You better be able to yeah. make sure people can find it that's right. digitally because if they miss it on the broadcast side, they have to be able to find it otherwise. That's right. But the economics of that, the, the monetizing of it, if you will, have we figured that out? Well, I think we uh, are figuring it out, just like everyone in the digital world. I mean, so what we've done is we've gone out there and we've uh, put our streams up. We've put our streams up through, you know, TuneIn Radio, through Stitcher, through uh, iHeartRadio. So we're getting them out all over. And, you know, the underwriting and the membership that's heard on the streams is also heard, whether it's, you know, whether people are listening on their radios or they're listening through Sonos or they're listening on their computers. So that we're able to sustain that and because public media has uh, diverse sources of revenue. It has revenue from members and that membership right. comes in also uh, through uh, when people are listening uh, digitally um, as well as corporate underwriting and sponsorship which comes in. So we're, we're figuring it out. With Radiolab as an example, we get about four million. Describe that. Radio Lab is a fabulous show with uh, Jad Abumrad and Robert Krolwich. It's about science and creativity. And if you want to, you know, figure out how decisions are made or learn uh, about politics from bees, uh, that's the place to <laughs> Wait, go. <what? laughs> well, the politics of the bee colony is very complex, and they did a little piece on, uh, you know, what Congress could learn from <laughs> how the bees figure I it out. That. You know, um, and it's that kind of show that you can hear on Radio Lab, and you know. A lot of that is podcast, but we've been able to bring in substantial membership because people all around the country love this show. 
show. And so we ask on the podcasts, and, and people care deeply uh, that there is a place that is, you know, about science, it's about creativity, it's, a, a, you know, things that, uh, that they, you know, look forward to every week. You don't buy the premise, uh, as I'm listening to you, it's presumptuous of me to say it, but it doesn't sound like you buy the premise of the question, uh, is radio dying, um, and are you necessarily competing terrestrial radio on, on the public side, competing necessarily with, uh, with satellite, but rather it sounds like what you're saying is there's going to be a place for that piece, but no, we will do these other things as well, and they're not mutually exclusive at all, in fact, no? Right, exactly. No, I think you said it very well. I mean, it's it's about people listening on the radio. That's still the lion's share of our audience. But then you add digital and you add... Uh, and you add the green space. We have this wonderful, you know, ground floor performance space. So we are on Describe air. Uh, we're in person in the green space. It's a it's a space that's you know wired. So almost everything is webcast. It fits about 120 people in the audience, and uh, then it has a stage. And it's also kind of black box, so you can sure. kind of change last it around. Excuse me. Last yeah. time we were with us on one on one, you were just opening that. That's right, and it's uh, it it has proven to be even more exciting. What's than it like? There? What's imagined. happening there? That so, is different than what would otherwise happen. Well, it's not just radio in uh, space, although that it is. It is people, you know, like Walt Frazier. We'll put a basketball hoop. Walt <laughs> Clyde Frazier? Yeah, right. You got it. Talking to Brooke Gladstone. Did a, yeah, so did a great what happens, interview. So he comes. So he comes. He and talks people to Brooke. Come? People come. And there's an audience. There's a live audience. He's watching Brooke. And, and it's being taped. We had uh, the Met Opera auditions. That was a live broadcast at WKXR. All these, uh, you know, these young 21 to 26-year-old uh, kids, kids, young young people who had won the auditions. That was a live broadcast on WQXR. We had um, boxing. And we put up a boxing match. We have this incredibly exciting thing this fall. Uh, the first uh, uh, partner to be able to record uh, the, all, all 10 August Wilson plays. And we'll be doing them in readings in the green space uh, with Ruben Santiago Hudson mm. um, and as the artistic uh, director. And it's just so special. How involved are you in the programming? I know you're involved in the business. I know you're involved in the fundraising with the relationships with underwriters, et cetera, and the partnerships. How involved are you? in the program. My involvement is to hire brilliant people and to let them uh, follow their own passions and to uh, then use those passions to kind of explore New York and the world. Um, you're, you're big on delegating? I'm, yeah, I'm big on delegating and delegating to great people who we have. You know, people like Brian Lehrer, or Leonard Lopate, uh, Kurt Anderson, Brooke Gladstone. I mean, these are the best of the best. and. Uh, you, you, all I want to do is support them and push them a little, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, try to make sure that they're heard and seen by as many people as, as they can be. And your brand, it's interesting, with Brian, who's got a yeah. heck of a brand and a yeah. reputation, how important is it, uh, again, people think because we're in public broadcasting, oh, you're in the nonprofit side. People confuse that with we're not business-oriented or we're not bottom-line-oriented in the sense that, we're not economical. We don't think of economies of scale, which is wrong because we tape so many shows here at our Lincoln Center studio, right? We have That's to be right, economical, exactly. right? Right. How much do you think about the branding, the marketing, the positioning of your operation? Well, I, I think about that uh, all the time. Uh, but I think about it, I think what it means to be a nonprofit is to be dedicated to superb quality and to uh, creating journalism and convening conversation and highlighting music that isn't going to be heard elsewhere. And so all of that is what energizes us every day. We have to compete as much as anybody else. And that's, uh, that means we've got to get out there and tell people who we are and where we are. Um, and we also have to, uh, you know, do things in an economical way. Um, and our business model, though, is one that relies on people uh, to pay for something they get for free. And that is... Try that, that again. So... Our members pay for something they get for free. Because, okay, they can go on the radio right now. And By the way, set it up so everybody knows the stations. So 93.9 FM, uh, 820 AM, that's WNYC. Uh, and then we have uh, 
105.9 FM, uh, WQXR, and then we have four stations in New Jersey. On the Jersey won't side. won't go th through right. all of them, but right. New Jersey Public uh, Radio. They are supported. About a third of that is supported by members. And, and you can get it for free. You can get it for free. But you ask but you, for people yes. to participate. Yes. Uh, just like you do here on uh, public television. But in our case, 170,000 people have said they've raised their hands and they say, this matters so much to me that I'm going to pay for this because I want to support it. And what that really means is, yes, they're incredibly generous people. Um, but it means that we have a much higher bar. We have to, we have to be so important to them. I think of this woman, Joyce, uh, who wrote to me right after Sandy. She lives on Jane Street. Hurricane Sandy. Yeah, Hurricane Sandy. Jane Street. Jane Street in Greenwich Village. Okay. And she wrote and she said, you know, we were in the dark zone for many days and we had one generator. It was outside on Jane Street and there were never fewer than 20 people there. Mm -hmm. The generator was used for two things. People were you know, plugging in their phones and, and charging them and listening to WNYC. And she said, I, I, after a couple of days, I put a tip jar there. And uh, it was a little uh, glass bowl, and it said, for WNYC. And people put quarters in it and, and dollars in it. And she sent a check for $200, which was the combination of the quarters and the dollars uh, that the people on Jane Street gave. And it, was, it meant so much to us. What did it mean? Um, you know, it meant that, I mean, she said in her, her, light, her letter, you were a lifeline. And that's why we were all there all day, you know, uh, because we knew that we were a lifeline to so many um, who had lost power or needed to feel that sense of community that radio can offer. And that's really what's so special about radio. It's that sense of being part of a New York and a New Jersey community of people who, are, who come together to help each other, to learn from each other and to share each other's stories. You've been doing this for a few years. Yeah. <laughs> and um, what's interesting to me, Laura, is that I've only known you for a couple of years in our second interview. You haven't lost any passion for this. No, I love this. I, I just love this job. I love radio. I love... With all the challenges and problems oh, it's so and much the funding fun. issues. <laughs> <laughs> but when you know, when you believe in something, um, it's a privilege. It's an alternative. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a privilege. <laughs> Listen, yeah. I want to thank you for joining us, and we're glad to be your partner on the broadcast television side. Yeah, well, thank, thank you, you so all much. The best. Okay, thank you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. Funding has been provided by Meridian Health, Wells Fargo. Qualcare Inc., NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology, Cone Resnick, NJ Best, Berkeley College, and by Verizon Communications. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.